Hello, hello, Awesome Soul here, and I am sure by now that at least some of you have seen that there is a new drone gameplay teaser out. This is the first one they have released, but not the first trailer. If you somehow do not know what drone is, and possibly missed my last video on it, I would recommend checking that out because it does have a fair amount of information that sort of gives a general idea of what the game is going to be all about, because the game isn't out yet. But of course, if you watched that video, you would know that already, now wouldn't you? So what I'm here to do for you guys is just to give my thoughts on the trailer and point out some things that I might have noticed that you may have missed. So without further ado, I will start out by reading the description of the original video. I'm doing this to give you guys a bit more context as well as allow me to elaborate on the points within later in the video. So, Drone is a sci-fi multiplayer arena shooter with an unprecedented amount of creative freedom. In this video, we show prototype gameplay, keyword being prototype gameplay. It's not quite alpha yet. Things are subject to change and vast improvements. The arena is also built in the in-game editor, as shown in the last video I did. We talked about that there. The footage here is recorded in-game with an internal pre-alpha build. What they mean by that is they are the only people who have access to this. That's what they mean by internal when they say internal pre-alpha. And obviously by pre-alpha, it means that they still have a long way to go before they release it to the public as a proper alpha. Now that that's out of the way, what exactly did I pick up on while watching this trailer? Well, first off, as they stated in the description, the arena that you see before you in this trailer, interior and exterior portions, including the trees, are all made in the in-game map editor. So what's great about this trailer is that it actually allows us to get some really good close-ups of the internal structures, i.e. buildings and all that that you'll be flying through. Previous trailers mainly showed off partial external and then nature. It didn't really show a whole lot of internal. It did, but only glimpses. This one actually takes place for, I think, about half the trailer inside a building, which is pretty nice. So certain things that intrigue me are the glass features. They do look rather nice, and it seems like you can kind of add them wherever you want. It's basically, if you want a window here, you basically pick it in the editor and slap it onto any block, and it kind of fits in, if I'm remembering correctly from the last video. So that will be really cool. I guess if you wanted to, you could make a giant glass maze, possibly? That would be a very weird map to make. I'm sure somebody's going to make that, though. The other thing is that we are going to be getting interactable pieces as well. Previous to this, we know that we had access to sort of this destructible thin metal fence, and you could shoot holes through that. That was really it for interactive pieces. There were, you know, physics-based pieces, but there weren't really any doors that opened, and that's exactly what we get in this trailer. So early on in the trailer, when they're flying through the interior of the building, there are different types of doors. There are a few small doors, which seem like they would be perfect for a human to fit through, although drones can work as well. And then there are the large doors. There's only... Actually, no, there's two large doors as well, because the entrance from the sort of ventilation system and then the exit out to the... well, outside, really. Now, they're not entirely clear on how these doors open. Is there an interact button that we don't know about that's not really showing up on the HUD because all well, that HUD element isn't there yet? Or is it the fact that all of your teammates need to be at a door before it will open? Or can you do different things? Maybe set it up so one door will maybe open if anyone comes by, but maybe another door will be set up to open if only one team is in the area. If two teams are in the area, then the door won't open. But like I said, all we really know here is that we're getting sliding doors, which is still something that's pretty cool. Now, the next thing is I noticed that there is most likely going to be collision damage in the game. Now, the main drone we see in this video, the pilot is very careful not to actually crash or bump into anything. However, we do see later on in the trailer a drone that actually crashes into a tree. Now, I'm pretty sure that this thing dies from collision damage, because if you actually watch that part for yourself, 
and sort of play it back, it will show that there are bullets whizzing past, but none of them seem to directly hit them. The only thing I could possibly think of is that there might have been lag, possibly, but it, I, I highly doubt that. They wouldn't have any servers this early in development, so it's most likely done either through LAN or AI, as in, you know, AI enemies. And then they certainly wouldn't have any input lag. So it definitely seems that there is collision damage, which honestly makes complete sense because uh, these things go pretty fast and it would seem very, very out of place to just bump into a wall and come to a stop and then carry on your merry way. Speaking of damage and exploding and all that jazz, it certainly seems that the drones themselves don't fall apart piece by piece, but rather they have their own individual health pool. And when this health pool is completely drained, then they will just explode, i.e. die. You know, think of any other video game, for example. Like, you know, an RPG, you got your super tanky guys with maybe 200 health, and your sort of lighter assassins, which have 100 health. So my guess here is, and when I say guess, I mean guess, I'm not positive on any of this, but what it seems like is each part that you get will have different health totals. This is most likely tied to weight as well, so as you expect, heavier armor provides more protection, but also slows you down. It makes sense. So all the basic parts you add, like cubes and stuff, would buff up your total health pool. And obviously each weapon would deal a certain amount of damage, and when you're at zero of your total health pool, you will explode. Because I've seen the entire trailer multiple times, and I have not seen anything fall off at all. They just kind of explode. Although we do have to remember this is pre-alpha, so for all we know, Maybe they do want parts to fall off, but it's just not implemented yet, perhaps? And speaking of parts, that is the last thing I do want to talk about. It seems like this game focuses on stats rather than incredibly different functions, if that makes any sense. You know, let me elaborate. Hopefully it will. What I mean by that is it seems like every drone in the game functions and flies very similarly to one another. What I'm getting at here is the main drone that we see only has two hover blades, but other drones have hover blades in an X shape, and then one, I think, has four sort of in traditional shapes. And there are even jets as well, but even the jets do seem to hover in place. So what this means to me is, as I said before, it definitely seems like the whole customization aspect of this game definitely focuses a lot around stats rather than function. So if you add this hover blade, for example, like hover blade, let's just call it hover blade A for now. Hover blade A will provide a lot of speed, but it's very, very lightly armored. Whereas hover blade B is heavily armored and doesn't quite turn as fast, but it's got some decent speed to it, it's just slightly less maneuverable. And if you wanted to add some wings, maybe those would allow you to turn faster. As we can see, the main drone does have two wings equipped, and it allows it to turn it around fairly quickly at one point in the trailer. Again, we do have to keep in mind though, this is pre-alpha. So things could possibly change. What we see here might be a little bit different. Maybe you will need three hover blades to make yourself stable. But they've definitely shown off a lot of their own creations without hover blades, and they were all kind of hovering around as if you don't exactly need them to hover. But for now, I definitely will consider it a very stat-heavy game, which I personally do enjoy. I know I've talked about the whole stats versus function thing without exactly explaining what I mean by function customization. Well, a really good example of this is the bread and butter of my channel. I'm sure the majority of you are familiar with that, and that is Robocraft. I would definitely consider Robocraft to be a function-heavy customization game, rather than a stat-heavy customization game. So what exactly am I getting at here? Well, Robocraft, you've got your insect legs, for example. You strap your insect legs onto your bot, and you are now a insectoid bot that can climb walls and all that jazz. You've got your tank tracks, which obviously turn you into a really, really heavy bot that's going to be pretty beefy, but obviously low to the ground. And then you've got your rotor blades, 
which are going to turn you into a helicopter. And you are now obviously going to function like a helicopter. The thing here though is, in Robocraft, all helicopters are more or less the same. There's only one rotor blade type, and there's different smaller versions of it for less CPU, but that's really your only option. There's no super tanky rotor blade that's gonna offer you more armor for less lifting power, perhaps. Likewise, for hover blades, there's no option for a really, really beefy hover blade that can lift a lot, but is a lot slower. That to me would be very stat-heavy customization. The only real way to differentiate things in Robocraft is by adding cubes, and therefore adding more armor, and then changing around your weapons and all that. But it seems to be in Drone, like I said, is taking a very different approach to customization. It's not quite Robocraft. So if you were expecting Robocraft 2, maybe turn your hype down a little bit. But if you were expecting a high-paced action game where you can customize your bot and mainly it focuses on aerial combat, then by all means, keep hyping the game up. But obviously, don't hype it up too much because it's not out yet. Like I said though, I'm very happy about this kind of stat customization. It's very, very intriguing to me because it puts players on a much easier level playing field. You're not going to have to worry about fighting a helicopter and then a tank. It's going to be, you're fighting a drone, but this drone is super fast, or this drone is super tanky, but everyone is fighting a drone. If that, hopefully that makes sense to you guys? I don't know, it makes sense to me. But anyways, moving on. It definitely looks like it's turning out to be a very, very, very fun game. And of course, if I haven't made myself clear, this is all speculation on my part. Just judging on what the trailer looks like, this isn't actually confirmed information. I mean, some things are, but that was basically what I talked about in the last trailer discussion. So if there's anything I missed, let me know down below. I would love to hear your feedback. I, of course, have been the Awesome Soul. I thank you all so very much for watching, and I will see you next time. Take care.